Hi, I'm Carol, and thank you for stopping by my channel. This is my cross stitching update for this last week. I'm kind of proud of myself that I've even managed to turn this back into a routine. And so, share what I have from last week, but also some of my plans for March. Now, I know I said literally in one of the last two videos that I didn't want to get too crazy with plans. And a large part of that is because a lot of what I'm doing right now is literally catching up on my 2019 plans. Yes, it is 2022 and I am stitching the stuff that I said I was going to stitch in 2019. And life had thrown me a couple curveballs. Not big, not like everybody got in 2020, but just some minor stuff that threw me off of what I had been trying to develop as habits on creating a space for my hobbies while also taking care of my kids, my household, the everything. So as a result, I when I got thrown off my stride, I shut down. So I had tried to pick it back up into 2020, but then the bigger, my kids being home all the time, discovering what education they were not getting, the spring of 2020 was a nightmare in my house. My husband wasn't around. Um, he was actually stuck overseas on a stop movement order. So that was the worst. I became a, a single mom, not by choice for three months, three and a half months. And it wasn't good. So I'd be, and I mentioned two videos ago that I finally went to seek the help I needed. So, you know, rock on. It's been great. Um, I actually showed my therapist my Instagram feed she remarked about how bright the colors are and I hadn't actually thought about it because I didn't realize that I love bright colors but apparently that's what I'm drawn to both when I pick out patterns and actually when I go to the fabric shop I have to stay away from all the colorful prints I don't wear them but I love them that's a total aside. Anyway, so one of the things I wanted to do though is as I was working my stitching rotation over this last week I am really discovering how helpful it is for me because what will happen is not so much that I burn out on cross stitching, I burn out on a particular project. Now I know there's a lot of different ways that people can choose to do a rotation. You can do it by hours, stitch count, days, whatever. I haven't found, I haven't cracked that code yet for me yet and that's okay. That's like the best part. It's a hobby. This is something that if I stop doing tomorrow the world will not end. But that I want to maximize my enjoyment of the entire process. And I am learning that a lot of the best part of my cross stitching is literally the act of putting the needle in the fabric. Like I really, really am finding that the process is helpful. So how can I not burn out on a project where it's like, okay, it's a great project. I love the project, but I don't want to, deal with that project when I am looking at the chart and I don't want to pick the next symbol or I'm just like I don't want to deal with these colors anymore I'm tired of doing the same three purples etc it is nice putting it down saying I'll see you in a week or whatever and moving on to the next piece even if it's pulling something like stitching out of the bag that I had been left stashed in the car just doing something different, I get to enjoy the process, but since I'm on a different project, it, it feels like I'm in a different place. It's, I won't even pretend to say that I understand it, but I am finding that it is really helpful. So, what this means for March, I'm gonna start all the things. Okay, not all the things, but my tentative plans aren't just the one start that I mentioned last week. But we'll get to that at the end. First, I want to show you what I have done in the last week. And some of these got a little bit, some of them got more than a little bit. Um, it kind of feels weird to me to share. I was like, I put maybe, for one of them, I put maybe 60 stitches in, but that's okay. It's, I guess that's how it is roll. So first I'm going to show you um, the Prairie Schoolers, a Prairie Garden. This is the chart. I have completed this half in this and I am now working in this thistle. So here it was last time and here it is today. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't get a lot done on that thistle. I'm working on the leaves. So it's just the same green that's used in the border, but anything to start. So I am hoping to knock this out this week. Finishing the this uh, particular thistle is, I don't want to set too many goals. I tend to not do well when I fail at goals, but I would like to speed this one along and it's not my focus focus piece, but it is a back of mind. It's like the next, this, not the first one I want to get done, but like the next one I want to get done. So my travel stitching, which does did not get a lot of time this week. Um, no more sports, so not sitting in bleachers. That's kind of nice because it's good for my back, bad for my stitching time. Anyway, it's Heartstring Sampler's Summertime Coverlet. And I have, I started at the middle, which is roughly down here, been going up, just doing all these flowers, and I'm still working in this upper right flower. But I did get an entire 36 inches of floss, uh, just because I forgot to have my steps with me in the car. So worked on this, We're doing the flower right here predominantly. But it's kind of nice. I hadn't actually stepped back and seen how much work I've gotten done, and I'm really happy with the look of this project. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do for the words. I don't think I'm going to put my name on it, but I still need to figure that out before I... Because the all the words are literally like right here. So that's something I'm going to figure out, but it'll probably take me a while to get there. So no hurries. I needed a little more it changed up in my life. So yesterday, this was unplanned. I wasn't even planning on touching it this week, but I did pull out Ink Circles Tapestry. And when I started, and started up with the corner and then dove to the center, I finished this motif and this motif. I'll show you the actual fabric probably makes more sense. But here it was last time. And here it is today. So I didn't do a lot, but I have a board. It's probably easier if I hold it up right. I had decided that this motif, I was originally planning on doing like a clockwise around, so I'd done this motif and this is like one big floral and I'd done the same here and I really, it's beautiful, but it sticks off of the center and a lot. I was like, eh, it looks a little weird. So I was like, I can do this and do this one. But I decided what I really wanted to do was fill in through here. So just get started. It's kind of nice. This color here, Briar Rose, is really, really pretty. I love that pink. So I, um, this one is more of a just when I feel it, but I was happy to take a little bit of a break from my other projects, because I don't want to say I was getting a little burnt out, but I was getting a little burnt out. Next up is Country Cottage Needleworks Joyful Summer. I'm sorry if I have any glare on this. The page protector that I keep the pattern in is not the helpful in this light, but it is not a huge piece. In fact, it's only, it's 69 wide by 162 tall, and this has now become kind of my focus piece. I told my daughter that I was going to make the decor for her door with it, so she really, really likes that idea. It's the more I've been stitching it, the more she's like, oh, this is so cute. So I'm like, feel kind of a little obligated. And that's cool because fortunately it's a pretty fast project. It doesn't require a lot of thought. And Last time I had shown you, I was still using the called for colors down here for the flower and the bird. If you can see, again, I don't know how you can see, the model is on a very light fabric. Let's see. Um, little boy blue linen. Well, whatever blue it is, it's not a very dark blue. So here it is last time. And here it is today. And you'll note 
The bird is not the same blue, nor is that flower the same purple. I ended up frogging the colors because they just did not jump off the fabric enough. The flower over here was originally this color purple that is in his wing. I did leave in the wing because I thought it looked kind of cute because it's a super contrast with the teal. What I ended up doing is taking this to my um, local needle workshop and I had, it was some of the ones, so I just started pulling. This was originally a teal color, it was just a very light teal, it came off as very pastel and there was no differentiation from the background. So I pulled a couple more off the wall that looked really close in idea. I was still trying to stay teal but I needed them in contrast against the actual blue of the fabric. It was funny how many of them would be like in six strands, look like they were going to be really awesome and contrast greatly with the blue, break it down to the two that I'm actually stitching with and nope, they disappeared into the blue. So I ended up going with a couple of Weeks Dye Works was actually ended up having the colors I needed. So this one is now Ocean and if you see it, This is really tealy, classic color works. It was the original color and it didn't stick out at all. So I ended up going with this, like how much darker I had to go, but otherwise you can't see anything on the project. And very similar, I went from Betty Bluebell to, this is also Weeks, Peoria Purple. I mean, they're this, it was trying to go for the same sort of tones, but just something that can be seen. And then I was really excited also. I finally got the word. Joy! Um, this is a really... I wasn't originally a fan of this project. Not because it's not cute, it's just not something that I would have necessarily picked for myself. And I had enough other projects in hand and then I was like, here I don't want this anymore, will you do it? And I was like, well sure, why not? And now that I've started working with it, it's been... this has actually been a project that has helped me learn to embrace variegated floss. I've complained about variegated floss in the past, so we'll just let that go. But this one, because it's not huge and the colors are really super bright, it's just made it, there's only a little bit of DMC, like the center of this flower, basically the yellow and the orange and this salmon color. But the rest of this is fancy floss and like, making the leaves here where I was running the diagonal so that it would not, it would kind of stay in line with the ribs of the leaf and I did, had done the same thing here and it's just, it's been really cool. So I, I wasn't intending to like this project but now it's actually hard for me to put down because I really, really, really enjoy it. The other thing I don't enjoy is I don't actually enjoy this Ada. Um, it's easy to stitch on. I've been stitching on linen for so long I've actually forgotten what it's like to use it. I've forgot how stiff it can sometimes feel, particularly when I'm putting in an intention in the hoop. But my real problem, I'm using a size 24 needle right now and I keep, pier if I miss the hole at all, I keep going through the fabric and I'm trying to avoid doing that. Um, I have a really bad habit of doing that anyway, so it, I was like, okay, so I kept making the needle bigger and bigger and it just seem to keep going. Oh well. And then my really big project for the week, because I just was really excited to kind of get back to this, Mirabilia's Autumn Queen. And I, it's, her hand is pretty much dead center. So it started at her hand and I am now working my way, if you'll see the bulk of the actual stitching is the bottom half here. So in the past I have done the to her head and work her way, like start in the middle, go up, find their head, and then work their way down. The problem is that you're dealing with miles and miles of dress, which the whole reason I picked these patterns is because I love the garments that the people are wearing, but I figured this time I'd start with the miles and miles of skirt, and then there's also more beading up here, and I do beading at the very end, so I'd rather do the bottom part first, and anyway. Here we were last time. And here we are today. I'm almost done with the purples. I didn't realize until I was looking at the chart Sunday. I was starting, this was the day I was starting to get a little burnt out on it. But, can I hold this up? There is like 
one more line of it starts here, comes down to about there, and that's it. That's all the purple. The rest of it is, I mean, and there she has some purple up in the top of her skirt, but fundamentally, I'm almost done with that skirt. It's so exciting. And the robe, I am really, I didn't see it at first when I had started this pattern because you have a little bit of the robe right here, but I couldn't tell what it was. And it wasn't until I'd started doing all the rest of this that I was like, ooh, this is looking amazing. And I kind of want to be able to, I've decided that I'm going to take it all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to start working on the whisper coming back up before I go all the way. So the stuff that'll be in the bottom that won't be, I have to worry about crunching it in my hoop. I'm going to try that first. And in worst case, it's, it's on the bottom. I won't care as much about having Frog and redo it if it's a problem. I don't know. I've never used Whisper before. It's I've had the cards sitting around waiting for the get it done for this project, but I haven't used it, so that'll be kind of fun. My technique with my Mirabilia is, is I always pick the next color has to be along the edge of whatever I'm stitching, so it's I don't like to wander off more than literal one one square. Preferably, it should be touching previous stitching, but sometimes you have to go around if it's stuff like chronic or beads, etc. Because I do all those at the end. I do all the DMC first before I touch anything else. I'm actually going to violate that this time because I'm going to try the whisper at the bottom. But it is one of the things where you can burn out when you have just the same mass of color the entire time. So that was where I was like, I was doing great, doing great. And I'm like, ah, I need to put this down. And that's, I've been kind of going with the, what do my feelings tell me? for driving when my rotation changes. Before I talk plans for March, I realized I have a little bit of, we'll call haul, but I did go shopping at the LNS this week. So, uh, a few things came home with me because I buy patterns faster than I'll ever make them up. Anyway, so the Sunday Stitches series from Heartstring Samplery, I picked up a couple of them. So this one is Blessed Assurances. So Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. And I blame, by the way, um, Instagram for these because I saw someone working on Blessed Assurance and I realized I needed to have it in my life. Uh, this one is When I Survey, since love so divine demands my soul, my life, my all. And then this one is Be Thou My Vision, which is one of my favorite hymns. Actually, it's, I have two songs that when I'm feeling, starting to get, having trouble, I have this, Be That My Vision, it's my religious one, Country Fred by Zach Bowden Band's my other one, yeah, it, but they really do help, like, if you need, like, an instant happy boost, having a song that you know will put you in the right place is fantastic. I have no plans for when I'm going to stitch those, but I did get them because I had to. Um, this one is wasn't from my LNS, but I had fallen in love with this again. Instagram is a really bad place. I see everybody's work and I want all the things. So Modern Folk Embroideries 2021 Stitch Along, The Fruit of Plenty. And yes, I have them all in the monthly leaflets because I'm going to do them one month at a time. And I went ahead and bought the floss for it. So I'm using DMC 3810. For the lighter portions and 3808 for the darker parts and I'm still waiting for I didn't see anything I loved with these are some pretty bright colors and I wanted to put them on white and white is harder to like white linen can be a little hard to find for whatever reason can't tell um, and I prefer uh, Swigart so Anyway, I'm um, going to try some Verbal Even Weave for that, and I hope that shows up next week, but we'll see. But anyway, that's a not a plan. I don't have a date on that, but I am going to hopefully be putting that in the meantime in my actual mess of starts. So, I was putting away my patterns last week, and I decided to count my Mirabilia's. I have 32 patterns. 32. I've stitched up three. 
at least that I finished. I'm working on number four. Ooh. So I've, I've bought all these patterns, including paying way too much for some of the outer print ones. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, but I realized it's great. They're sitting and I have a box, big box that is really devoted to just holding my patterns. And it's great. I have all these wonderful things, but short of me pulling out the box and flipping through my stuff and looking and go, Ooh, isn't it pretty that I own this? I'm not using them. And now again, it goes, it's much easier to buy patterns. You can buy them in a flurry in a shopping cart or in the store. I've done both. Um, it takes more time to actually stitch them up. Now, the other thing I've done is in some of these I've already kitted up. I'm not really one who's generally spends their time like picking a fabric and having all the floss and then buying a whole separate mass of floss and generally tend to just pull off of whatever I have from other projects and then fill in as needed. But when I had kitted it up Autumn Queen, I also got all the DMC for Royal Holiday and Winter Queen at the same time and I haven't started them. I even have the fabric. Like, that's, for me, that's, like, super kitted up. Like, that's insane. I'm literally ready to start. I could start them right now. And I haven't. And I've had all the supplies around for three years. So, I decided it's March. I know I'm not original on this, but let's go ahead and make it a Mirabilia March. So, every week, for the next four weeks, I will be starting a new Mirabilia. Why? Because I have the fabrics, I have the floss, I have the patterns, and they're not gonna stitch themselves sitting in a box. And I'm still also gonna start Ave Maria on the 25th. So that means for me, who currently has, including the needle point that I haven't shown you guys, 10 whips. I'm adding five. Yes, that's a 50% increase in one month. This is either gonna be fantastic or terrible. I don't know. And so what I've decided, uh, once I gave myself permission that let's go ahead and use these things, because I already have them, that this is an experiment. If I feel overwhelmed at the end of this month, I'll know not to start anything else. And yes, I have other stuff that is kitted up, but it's not Mirabilia based, so we're not doing them this month. Um, this will either, like I said, I'll say, cool, I'll start more things, and I don't mind having a bunch of whips, or I'll say, this is too much, and I am a little more monogamous of a stitcher. I don't know. I actually have no idea about that for myself, so I figured you guys get to come along for the ride. And so first up is the non Mirabilia. I shown last week Ave Maria, the Annunciation, and I wasn't entirely certain what I was going to do as far as I knew that I wanted to do blue on a light color fabric, and I picked out the blue first. So I don't know. Maybe you can see it on here. It is DMC 311. It is a medium navy blue. Um, not too bright, not too gray. It is truly a beautiful mid-tone blue. And I am obviously some stitching all this. So Mary Gabriel and all this border will be in blue. The problem is then I was like, okay, what kind of fabric do I want to use? And most of what was in stock of the LNS was it wasn't so much that it was darker, but a lot of them had very warm brown tones. And so when I would put the floss down, I didn't love it. So yes, I actually ended up going super basic. It's 36 count white linen. Yep. But I am very excited to be starting that on the 25th. My husband is, I hadn't shown him that pattern because I had not been showing him how much I had bought over the last few years. I've had that one around for two years now. And he was like, oh, that's really beautiful. So I, I even told him, start on the 25th of March. Hope to have it done by the 25th of December. Fingers crossed. We'll see. But he's, he's excited about it. So, hey, that's cool. Because I even think I know the perfect place to have it framed in our house. So my Mirabilia starts in no particular order. Mentioned it had Witter Queen. Yep, she's been hanging around since 2002. So I have this big chunk. Yeah, I wasn't terribly original. I had started all these on the white that is called for because I don't even know if it gives you the alternate on this. On the back of like one of, I think, Autumn Queen, it gives tells you just white linen from Witchelt, alternate fabric, 32 count white 
Belfast linen from Swigart, which is what I, when I bought the original, I bought two cuts for the four pieces back in 2002. So I got what was exactly what was called for on the back of the envelope. So obviously the rest of them now have to match. Um, it's okay, I don't mind working on white. And since they're kind of charted up to look like, it'll be fine. I feel like I should pick like more interesting colors, but I'm not very good at that. So I also, it's like, let's just go keep going with some seasonal queens. Uh, Royal Holiday here. Now, she can't be done in white because all this beautiful white trim on her uh, cloak would just be lost. So it calls for um, chestnut linen from Witchold or Toasted Almond by Swigart. Um, I didn't love either one of those. They just seemed a little too warm. Uh, most of... I tend more towards picking cooler colors, so... This isn't really much cooler, but it's a little bit, so I went with light mocha instead. Um, I think it'll work fine. It has con it has enough contrast that the white should stick out. Also, this is me picking a color is... It was nerve-wracking at the time. <laughs> so, my uh, third start will be Lady of the Mist. And I had purchased fabric for her back in 2020. Um, I don't know if I have all the floss for her, so that's going to be an interesting. I might have, she might have to be towards the end of the month. I don't have any, like, I haven't picked which one it's coming. I know which one's coming first, but I don't know past that. I don't have an order, so I might have to go buy everything. I haven't even looked yet. I just was like, yes, I have the fabric. I have the pattern. Let's roll. So for her, I am going to use um, 32 count roll natural. This is, this is also Zweigart. Um, it's... Lovely and neutral, that's what I was kind of aiming for. It's honestly a fantastic grayish color, like, it matches my walls. I didn't pick these walls either, but I love them, so it works out great. And then the one that I do know is going to be my first start is the Stargazer. I love her, I love everything about her, right down to her hair, makes me think of mine, so. I have, and I didn't bring it in here because it's tucked around um, the Roses of Provence because I bought it at the same time, but I have all, I have all the beads for her. I literally have, and all the floss, I have everything. She's like a truly fully kitted up. So, and she's a little smaller compared to um, my queens, so we'll see how that looks. And she's also going on the raw natural, the natural, yeah, raw natural. 28 count. So that's, this also gets fabrics out of a box where they're, they, again, they don't stitch themselves up. So I'm very excited that I've even decided to go with this Mirabilly March. Again, it's, these are my favorite patterns. Uh, like I love, okay, I get distracted and love everything else, but at heart, the Mirabilly designs are the ones that keep me going. They are why I keep cross-stitching, so I'm really hoping that having more than just one to play with will be satisfying. And again, if in April I'm like, nope, can't do this anymore, no harm, no foul. It, I'm, not, I, I'm not even buying anything special at the moment. So that's what I have going on. I hope that... You are going to have fun with whatever your March plans are, that the weather is doing great. The birds are singing today. It is the first day of meteorological spring, so enjoy that. And I know I will because the weather is supposed to be absolutely gorgeous today. And I hope that you have a great week with whatever you are crafting in. I've been preferencing cross-stitching, but some I keep falling over some yarn and going, maybe I should go back to knitting. So whatever your crafting is for the week, I hope you enjoy it and I will see you next time. Bye.